So earlier in the year, a new James Bond novel came out. Um, I, I completely missed this when it happened. It was in May, timed to correspond with the coronation, uh, which features in the plot. It's Bond's mission to uh, stop the incumbent king being shot on his big day. Um, uh, it's, it's written by Charlie Higson, who wrote the young Bond novels that I, I very much enjoyed when they first came out, especially the first one, Silverfin. Um, I uh, thought they were the thinking teens Alex Ryder, as I remarked to my chums um, before they beat me up. A lot has changed since Bond was a teen and now, when he is apparently in his mid-thirties, but throughout this novel talking as if he is geriatric. Um, that's just one element of the kind of identity crisis that, that Bond seems to be in. This novel really is um, a Bond and a brand in complete freefall. So as I say, the, the plot revolves around that there is an attempt on the king's life. Um, someone's going to try and kill him on, on the day of the coronation. Bond is sent to uh, eliminate the, 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 the man suspected of orchestrating it, a man calling himself Ethelson of Wessex, who claims direct uh, descendancy from Alfred the Great. So he has, a in his um, strange English nationalistic mind, he has a, a greater claim to the throne um, than Charles. This... Um, enabled Higson to to take Bond to a political territory that is deeply icky. Um, the villain and his cohorts are anti-woke. They, they sing three lions on the shirt in their secret lair, and they ask each other, what are we going to do about the Muslims? All uh, really strange territory to see see Bond in the in the midst of. And, and this is sort of the first and primary problem with the book. Higson clearly wants to, to, to criticise this Nigel Farage, Jeremy Clarkson-esque um, uh, uh, British nostalgia mindset. But Bond is a, is, is a pretty useless tool uh, to use as a, as a critic of um, that kind of nationalism. Men like Nigel Farage, Ethel Stan of Wessex, dream of being James Bond. He is the hero of uh, misty-eyed British triumphalists. So the novel's plot immediately throws um, Bond's whole identity and brand kind of into crisis. Hickson use, seems to use sort of half of the current era um, film Bond, the slightly keep calm and carry on tinged older Bond, the Bond who, who you know, jumps out of a plane with the Queen um, and then fuses it with a younger Bond. So his, his Bond in the book is in his sort of mid 30s. Um, which allows him to be slightly more critical of the world and 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 um, you know he Bond does a little bit of self analysis and calls himself dull and mainstream or or at least wonders if he is, um, but at the same time because it's slightly Daniel Craig uh, influenced he's acting like he is you know geriatric and an old dinosaur, um, just like those later Craig films did, you belong in a museum type type uh, shtick. His 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 running commentary to himself and his banter is so decrepit. Um, he he makes some kind of remark about how every morning he starts first thing, no matter how cold it was, like a modern sports car, like one of those modern mobile phones. His eyes lit up when he got the message. Well, it's very partridgey, and I know I reference Alan Partridge a lot in these uh, in these videos. But there was a point when I was thinking, I think this is all a piss take. I think. There were, there were two um, very particular Partridge references to Toblerone and getting a second series where I thought, no, that's one Partridge reference too many. Charlie Higson is sending this whole thing up as a joke. Um, and pastiching Bond. And I'll come back to the idea of pastiching Bond because I, I think um, it reminds me of, of something else I've spoken about recently. But on the face of it, this this could be an opportunity to, you know, interrogate the, the, the grotesque side of, um, of British nationalism and the obsession with tradition, um, thinly veiled racism and all, all those, all that ugliness that could have been put into conflict with whatever the author decides. No, this is, this is, um, you know, something about British tradition that's valuable. This encapsulated in James Bond, what does he do? But instead, he just ends up sort of reflecting that he's just a clenched fist. He's just a tool. Um, and he sort of mildly disapproves of, uh, of of what he sees when he goes undercover and he meets all of these Faraji Clarkson-y types. 
and I think that was quite a, quite a missed opportunity, really. Um, it reminded me that earlier in the year I read um, a pastiche Bond novel called Bond Strikes Camp by uh, Cyril Connolly, in which uh, Bond is manipulated by a sexually predatory M to um, drag up in order for M also undercover, unknown to Bond, to um, trap him and have sex with him, which is pretty out there, uh, pretty outrageous and pretty funny, I thought. And I was thinking in a way, it is a shame that Bond has become dull and mainstream, because if he was less mainstream, there would be more um, more opportunity to to kind of play with his legend a little bit more. How funny would it have been if in this novel, the premise is exactly the same. King Charles is, uh, you know, th there's, a, there's a plot to kill King Charles on his big coronation day. There's a there's a nutter claiming to be direct de uh, descended from Alfred the Great, called calling himself Ethelstan of Wessex. Um, he's hosting secret parties full of uh, right wing agitators and shock jocks and stuff. And Bond goes undercover. And the more he hears, the more he thinks, you know what, these guys have kind of got the right idea. And uh, Bond is radicalised by the far right and ends up pulling the trigger on May the 4th and actually killing the king. How how lacerating a, 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 a vision of all of that kind of excess and ugliness would that be and hero worship of Bond? You know, Hickson's background is in, is, is in comedy. He must have... The, the, those Partridge references, if you're not familiar with Partridge, anyone who is knows how specific Toblerone and second series are. I find it very difficult to imagine uh, Hickson would have slipped them in and not uh, done it by accident. And if he didn't write it as a send up, then um, kind of what's the point? What What is the point of Bond in the future? It's, it's interesting to speculate in terms of the films, what they're going to do next. The book seems to subvert almost everything traditional about Bond. Um, the two big ones for the books, um, horrific sex scenes and massive breakfasts, both feature but in diminished form. The The sex scene is a pseudo sex scene. It's sort of like a, a pretend one to, th to throw the enemy off the scent. And Bond, Bond's massive breakfast is very berry dominated and, and granola heavy. It's, it's not the absolute orgy of uh, toast and eggs that he routinely demolishes in novels like Casino Royale. Um, a baffling book. Um, a really terrible book. Uh, for the first half, a pretty funny book, um, but sort of one that you, you laugh at rather than with, I'm afraid.